everyone and welcome to Polymer Clay TV. Today we are working with Color Me Magic Transfer Papers. And these are kind of the adult version of coloring books but for Polymer Clay. So they come already printed onto the Magic Transfer Paper. And we have a bunch of designs and you can see them all at createalong.com and uh, you can just cut apart what the pieces you need and use them. I did a video last week that showed how to actually transfer onto the clay. It's very simple. I'll link to it in, in the description of this video, but it's right here on our YouTube channel, and if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you won't miss a thing. So uh, make sure to subscribe. But anyways, I show you how to transfer them last week, so I'm not going to show you that. But what, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about different things that you can... Uh, used to color them and different ideas to really change things up. So uh, I have some things laid out here to kind of give you an idea of what I did and uh, where you can go with it. So I had a question, number one, can you, can you color on the paper before you transfer it? And I was unsure about that because a lot of the markers on, are very uh, liquidy and this paper is a cellulose has cellulose in it so it dissolves in water which is what happens when you transfer it uh, the paper dissolves and leaves the design right on your clay so I wasn't sure about it so I went ahead and tried it and it totally works it totally works you can paint or rather color onto the color me magic transfer paper before or after you fire it let me show you what I'm talking about here. Um, you can just color on it right here onto the paper without a problem and then transfer it. However, doing that, you're not going to get as bright a color as you would by painting this after. However, you know, that might be the, the look you're going for. You may not want something so bright, you know, anyways. So this, let me just give you an instance. This is the one here that was done with the markers before I transferred it. And I used a few different markers. The pink was a Sharpie. Actually, you know what? It might have been the Bic. I think the pink was a, a Bic marker, and it's just a Bic marks it. Nothing special, you know. It works with a lot of different markers. The green was this grease pencil that I had, and that transferred really well. The colors seemed to come out the same. Um, the black is already how it comes. The, the yellow and this green Copic marker, and let me show you what a Copic marker is. They're refillable markers. And this is a Copic marker and it has two different sides. One's a brush marker. And that's what I used right here and in here. And those did not transfer as well um, when, you did, when I did it before, you know, on the paper before I actually transferred it. You know, so I wouldn't use the Copic markers necessarily, um, you know, if I'm just drawing on the paper, but the Copic markers work really good after you actually bake it. So let, let, let's, let's just go through a few of the things and then we'll get back to that because I just want you to know what I've done here. Okay, so on this one here, I baked it first. First I transferred it, obviously, and this is the snails in the garden. I transferred it first onto a yellow clay, and you, I think you saw me do this on, a, on another... Uh, on the other video. That's what I did. Then I came back and I used metallic. After I transferred it, I let it dry and then I baked it. So this is was completely baked before I added any color to it. So then I came back with metallic markers. Okay, this is the metallic marker here. It's by American Crafts. And I, I just drew in here, drew around. And this really is like, it's very opaque, this, these uh, metallic markers. So you don't really see through it. So if you're, if you're wanting something that you see through, do not use the metallic markers because they, they did not see, you did not, uh, you can't really see through them. And then I use the Zig Riders. Um, there's two sides on these Zigs. Let's see. There's a, there's a real skinny side, which I did not use. And then there was the thicker side. I think this is the color I used here. And I just, you know, went along and and just drew like you're coloring and you know as I was sitting here the other day just making up some samples I got so deep into this I wasn't thinking about anything else I was just trying to stay in the lines and it was meditative you know I never bought those coloring books because I don't know I just I have carpal tunnel in my hands and 
And I thought, well, you know, it might be a little hard to do, but you know what? I really found it meditative and I really like the way it looks and and you really don't have to be too careful with these markers, you know, you can they kind of do it for you. You know, you just let it let let it work for you. <laughs> so that's what I just did with that. And then let it dry. Now someone asked about sealing it. Well, the thing is these are permanent markers. And I don't think it's going to come off very easily. I really don't. Although I think it can come off. Well, look, it did on my finger. And this was the metallic one. But unless you're rubbing at it, I don't, I don't think it'll come off. Like if you, if you do this on, say, um, housewares or something like that, and you're not going to use it, that, and not going to use it all the time, then I don't think you have a problem. However, if you're going to do this on jewelry, that metallic marker in particular did come off. So you have to test your markers. And so if you're going to do it on jewelry or something like that, that's going to get a lot of wear or a lot of touch, I would seal it. And you can use future floor wax. Um, I think it goes by a different name now. And you would just paint it on, and then I bake it again. I always uh, paint, I always bake my future floor wax too, because that makes it harder and just helps to give it a nice seal. You can use polyurethane, a water-based polyurethane to seal clay. You can use liquid clay. And, you know, there's the Kato liquid clay. There's the Sculpey and the Fimo. This is the liquid Sculpey. And then there's also the Fimo gel. And with these three, you're going to get your clearest with, with the Kato. The... The uh, liquid Sculpey is a little more muddy, so if you, it, I wouldn't use it in this particular um, project because you're not gonna, you want to be able to see the design, and this will cloud it up. So I wouldn't, I would stay away from the liquid Sculpey. However, the Fimo gel and the Kato would be a good choice to put a thin coat over to seal it as well. So those are your options. Um, you know, and any other kind of, kind of sealer you want. There's tons on the market. You can even use a spray sealer. So that's just really for jewelry or anything that's going to be handled that you don't want it to accidentally get messed up. You know, do that. Seal it with, with something. Okay, so that's that. This, these were all done with markers. I just painted, right? I just drew right on them. Um, these, both of them, were done with the markers. And this is just a bangle bracelet. Um, and you can do anything you want. I was going to add a big flower at the, at the top here, but I wanted to show the design. And these bangle bracelets, they flex. So if, if your wrist is bigger, like mine, I just flexed it before I added on the clay. That way it was the size I needed to prior to baking. Okay, so these ones here are a super cool thing I discovered that I really like. I really liked putting the design on, okay, transferring the design, and then I just went back and added some of this Kato liquid clay. Now the thing about clay, the liquid clay, is it's transparent. It's still, you can still see through it. And that was what was so cool about this, these, doing it like this, because you can get a really cool, almost like a glass-like finish, but still see the design through it. So I really, really like the look of that. And I, um, I'll put some pictures up on the blog at polymerclaytv.com so you can see that close up too. And so, you know, this one, these were all done with markers. You can do it, you can do it on other colors of clay. It doesn't have to be white. So this is on blue, this is on pink. You know, totally mix it up. Anything, anything you can think of, you can do. So, you can also use, you can paint these with regular paint, acrylic paint. Um, any, you know, like I said, you don't have to use the markers. You can use, any, you can use whatever medium that'll stick to polymer clay. So then I thought, okay, well, how about some, some uh, alcohol ink? And that totally works, too. So, I mean, really, you can, you can color these any way you'd like. I just took um, this little sponge brush I had, and I kind of just started dipping him, and I just kind of swirled it around like this. Doesn't look like I got any of the, the blue in there. I think I need a little more blue. But how pretty is that? It's so simple. Um, they do make little daubers that uh, are made for the alcohol inks, but I couldn't find mine, so I just have this sponge, which works fine. But look at how pretty that is, and with very little effort, too. And so I made these. I was going to make these into 
into a set. How pretty would that be? So super easy, super, super, super easy. All right, so let's let's move on to something else. So that's the that's the alcohol inks, and you can use any brand. These are the Adirondacks, but they there are other brands on the market. There's a Pinata ink. Um, those will work. Any of them will work. So just play around with it. Really, that's what it's all about. When you're doing something like this and you're trying a new product, you want to just play around with it and see what stretch it to its limits and see what it can do. That's what I that's what I always do. Um, because you find all kinds of things you didn't know it could do, you know, and then you're all excited because it's like a new discovery. I mean, to me, going from something that's, okay, basically flat, you know, it's a matte finish, uh, you could color it in, and that's great because it's beautiful colored in. You could, you could add the ink, you know, um, but you can also add the liquid clay and it gives it a whole different look. So what I did... The thing with liquid clay is it's going to want to pull away from the edges a little. That's one thing it likes to do. Um, so I, I actually start on the edges, and I don't worry about that. Because the way, when I, when I paint this on to the edges and it pulls away, it kind of, it separates it and gives it a really cool look. So I really like it. So I, you know, I, I don't worry about trying to get every little square centimeter covered I just do the best I can and if it pulls away from the edges I, I, I know that it's gonna still look cool you know I mean it's not gonna pull away a half an inch it's just you know not all it won't probably stay all the way to the edge which is good though because you don't want it to go puddling on you and you can even change up the colors too so you don't have to do, I wouldn't have to do all red if I didn't want to I could I they come in a lot of colors I have them I got a I got a set of them, I, thought, I think really, really reasonable on Amazon. So what I'm trying to do here is go slow enough so I don't introduce any air bubbles. Because they're a pain in the neck if you get air bubbles, and, and it happens. You know, you want to try to avoid them, so try to work a little slow. And I kind of like, like, like to use my tip as I go to help if I, any comes, if I see any come to the surface, I'll use the tip to help pop it. And what I do is I let this sit. And right now, you can't see through it. It looks like it's totally opaque, but it isn't. And when I bake it, you'll see what I mean. Um, because th that's what these look like when I, when I did it. So don't feel alarmed like you just ruined your piece or whatever. It's not, it, it's not gonna stay like that. This, it, this is uh, translucent, the liquid clay, so you, it will be after it baked. It won't be completely clear, obviously, because it's got a color to it but it will still be translucent. And it does, like I said, come in a bunch of colors. Um, I've got a yellow, I've got a blue, let's see, a green, actually that's a purple, a green, a blue. So it, it's available in other colors. I have, um, and here's an orange, and I think there's a black and a white, so, as well as the, the normal clear that's on the market. So there's a bunch of different colors. And if you only have the clear, you can, you can definitely make your own colors, too. So you can add um, things to the liquid clay that will change the color of it, too. And there's, a, there's all kinds of stuff online about that. So that's pretty much it. It's, it's just a matter of doing what you like and coloring it however you like, using and trying different markers. Um, some of the markers will be much brighter than others. Some you'll find that are, that are, you know, just are too light, you know. It's so experiment with your different markers and, and just have fun with it, really, because it, it is so fun to do. And like I said, I did, when I started this out coloring, you know, I was like, ah, I don't know about this whole adult coloring stuff, you know. And then I talked to people and they're like, oh, I love it. It's so meditative. And you know what? It really is. It really, really is. It's just, you, you get so involved with, with coming up with unique ways to make it look, you know, different and fun that you get lost in the, in, in the moment and just have fun with it. Really, that's what it's about. Because when you were kids, you don't sit there and say, oh my gosh, this green doesn't look right next to this yellow or, oh, I should have done it that way. Kids just create with abandon. And that's, I think, what 
what is so appealing about the on uh, the adult coloring and stuff is because you can create with abandon you don't have to be exact you don't have to worry about things this is all about fun it's all about doing what you like creating and having fun with it and so that to me it is what makes it you know so awesome and so um i think uh, you have a nice starting point here uh like i said you can make them you can do it already on colored clay you can do it on the white clay like i did here and use the alcohol inks you could use the markers this is on yellow clay so like i said you can do it on any color of clay that it'll show up even um you know a darker clay maybe with some white markers would be really cool too um that would be a neat look i'll have to give that one a try but i really really like I like all the versions. I really do. I mean, no matter what I did, I couldn't find anything that, that wasn't appealing to me. I loved it all. So that was so, what was so exciting about this technique because, you know, sometimes you're like, ah, but, but I could do so many different things with it. And, and I just love that. So I, I hope you'll give it a try. You can find the Color Me Magic transfer paper in our shop at createalong.com. And like I said, it comes already printed you don't have to go to the copy the copy place to get it done because with the we do sell them in the blanks where you can design your own stuff but you do have to use a laser printer and if you don't have one then you got to go to the office supply store or whatever and have them printed however these are to make it easier for you so you don't have to worry about finding designs and you don't have to go to the to the office place so this does make your life easier that's one of the uh, appealing things about it as well and we've done them in circles and squares and borders and full overall designs so there's something for everyone and you know just experiment with the markers you have and see what works don't go running out buying tons of markers just use what you have and then if there's some color you like then you can always add it to your collection you know but just have fun with it and i would love to see what you do Please come over and join us on Facebook. We have a new group called Polymer Clay Tribe. And if you want to find it, you can just go to polymerclaytribe.com and that'll take you to the Facebook group. And all you have to do is click join and we'll approve you. And then you'll be have, able to j join in and uh, share pictures of what you're making and doing. And, and there's so many wonderful, awesome people in there that are sharing all kinds of tutorials and and fun things and it's just a great community and we're actually already up to like a thousand people in there so imagine a thousand clayers how awesome is this that they all get together and kind of share ideas and and uh, encourage each other and it's just wonderful so i i uh, i really encourage you to come over and check out polymer clay tribe on facebook it really is a lot of fun and every 500 members we give something away so we're actually giving away a set of 10 pan pastels and uh, those are really fun if you've never worked with pan pastels we love them and they're not cheap so this is a really nice gift and we're also going to be giving away some of the hollow bead makers from polyform so definitely go over there and join um, the contest will be starting probably later today because I when, when I, before I came to do this video we were only three short of a thousand members so by now I'm sure we're up there so hopefully you'll join us and uh, like I said you can find everything at createalong.com have fun coloring I'll see you next time thanks for joining me mm -hmm.